Hey, this is Joe, Gray Bench Electronics. Today, we're checking out the Jex Telez white pedal. There are different versions of this pedal. This is a version one with the white knobs. Uh, this is a very early one. This is serial number six. Found it on reverb for y'all. Figured it'd be cool to show. So uh, the controls don't come labeled. The box has some labels inside. The previous owner decided not to install them and I won't either, but the knobs in order are volume, gain, uh, treble and bass. The switch on the side here is called the Yoko switch and uh, it's changing up a capacitor value in the, uh, the filter circuit at the output of the pedal. We'll look at that more later when we look at the schematic for the pedal. Right now we're going to crack it open and have a look inside. So a little tip, if you're ever taking apart one of these pedals or any pedal that has this style of uh, like alpha multi-pole switch, rotary switch, usually there is some flexibility and then you can adjust the range of the switch. So if you want, you know, like uh, two pole, it's usually like two through eight throw. So two, three, four, five, six, and you adjust that with a little washer that has a tab and that just sort of sets the, the limit or the range of the knob. It can't click past a certain point. Um, so as I remove it, I'm going to be careful to make sure I see what uh, notch it's in so I can put it right back in there. You could also do it just by putting it in there and testing, make sure you have the number of clicks you want. In this case, it's three. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we're going to take it out slowly and make sure we leave that washer where it wants. Um, so the washer is going to be pointed in towards the switch. I'll pull it out this way. And then hopefully... As we pull the board out here, we can leave that washer in its place. There it is underneath here. So we have the two lock washers for some reason. I'm not sure if that's correct, but this, um, this metal washer right there, it's got a little tab and you can see there that it was in It was in that second slot on the left there. Let's see if I can point to that. It was in this slot here. So that should mean this, this switch goes anywhere from two pole all the way up to, I don't know, like 11 or something. And we go in this th uh, third one here, which gives us a three, three way throw for the switch. And that's what this little washer with a tab on it does. All right, so here is the circuit board or the Jex Telez white pedal. So this would be if the pedal was facing up. Again, we have volume, gain, or they call it sustain on the board here, treble and bass. Right in the middle here, this is a inductor. According to available DIY schematics, it's a 500 millihenry inductor. Sounds reasonable. Uh, there's another reason it's believed to be that, and we'll look at that in a second. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, TO92 transistor packages. Uh, let's see, we got some big filter caps here, pretty standard three pole double throw switch. Interesting setup with the LED here. We have one leg coming into the board here, and then another leg with a cable running all the way back over here to this point. So uh, this was an early version of the pedal. Um, so hopefully, You'd imagine this is something they ironed out with a, a later PCB. 
the builders, Jack Sellers, they made the choice to go with carbon composition, carbon composition resistors, um, which is a choice, uh, except in a few places where we have metal film resistors. Otherwise, everything looks pretty standard. I don't see anything really unique. Um, let's see. A, just a, an assortment of different types of capacitors. We have box film capacitors, um, little Panasonic sort of maroon capacitors. Obviously we have electrolytics going to be the filter supplies and maybe cathode bypass or cathode, um, like um, emitter bypass resistors. Um, yeah, alpha pots back of the board here. Nice quality solder job, I would say. A little bit of unevenness in, in the terms of the length of the leads. Like this one here is a little long for this capacitor here. Not a huge issue. Yeah, looks pretty good. The Yoko switch here is on nice long wires, which is going to make it fairly easy to install the install this switch into the um, chat or the enclosure. Inductor here is the like the halo style, I guess you would call it that you find in uh, wah pedals. I really, it kind of annoys me to see these um, quarter inch jacks. These are obviously the Switchcraft, um, I think they're 11X or something, but these are like the, the cheap China knockoffs and I just feel like, the, I don't know, I guess the price difference does make a difference, but I just feel like, I don't know, they're not that expensive, just go and get the real thing, especially for a pedal that I, I don't think it was cheap when it was new. Just, you know, go splurge an extra 50 cents for the, for the real deal um, Switchcraft jacks, but whatever, small gripe. Um, otherwise, everything looks really good. Um, transistors here, uh, I'm gonna read these off. This one is a 45N4AA. Not sure what that number is. Sounds like a, maybe a house number. It's not any like JEDEC designation I recognize. Over here is a BC547, MPN, BJT, medium gain or so, this one. That's a, this one here is a 2N4125, 2N4125, 2N4125 there, another BC547. This is a, right here, this is a C1849, which I think is just another MPN, BJT. All right, so there is the PCB for the Jex Teles white pedal version one. We're gonna head over to the computer now and have a look at the schematic. We're also gonna have a look at it's what this pedal is based off of the Vox Conqueror preamp. Okay, so before we look at the schematic for the Jex Teles pedal, I just wanted to look at this. This is the info sheet that is supposed to come with the pedals. Mine didn't have it with it. Uh, this is just a picture I pulled off Reverb. But let's look through this. So white pedal designed and voiced by Bob Ebeling and Colin Simon. Uh, you can use the include label, so labels don't come on it. Uh, but it tells you what they are here, volume gain, treble bass, and then Yoko switch on the side. Um, we voice the pedals sound like the box solid state amps. Beals and Stones use the circuit. Unique fuzz blended with an inductor, a sort of parked wah. Fuzz is aggressive, you have vintage. Shoots out of mixes with ease. Uh, expanded the palette of tones, so they did some mods allegedly. Uh, made the treble and bass knobs interact with the inductor. Fine tune the EQ, okay. Blah, 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 different sounds you can get out of it. Okay, um, so let's look at the schematic for the pedal now. Um, so this schematic, this is a remake of the original tracing from Free Stomp Boxes. This program is called LC Spites. It's a simulation program. So I just redid the schematic in here. If you want to see that original schematic, check the description. I'll put a link to the, uh, the Free Stomp Boxes thread. Um, but going through this here quickly, we come into a pretty standard... Um, uh, gain stage here, uh, two, two gain stages, and then it goes into this uh, sort of duplex of uh, clipping happening here. Now, this pedal is using these 2N4125, 2N4125s as essentially clipping diodes, but they're actually transistors. Uh, so it's important to remember that a transistor is really just two diodes back to back. Um, in the case of PMP, it's two P regions that share an N region. So we have P and P. In this case, we have like a P and junction going from rail to rail here. Um, so it's really just like anode to cathode, anode to cathode for diodes. 
Um, we'll take a look in a second, but chances are if we just replace these with silicon diodes, it's gonna the the, the, the it's gonna look the same. Um, so anyway, there's also a sort of feedback thing happening where we're taking a line back here through resistor back into the emitter of the first gain stage here. Um, we come out of that whole distortion business into the tone slash filter, whatever here, tone stack, um, treble control, bass control. There isn't a good way to make potentiometers in LT Spice, so it's just, it, I, we draw, draw it here as just two resistors that we change the value of. Um, this is the Yoko switch, so it's just switching between three different capacitor values in parallel with the inductor, which is a 500 millihenry inductor. Um, coming out of that into a little capacitor resistor network, output capacitor, and volume control. Um, interesting up here, nine volts obviously coming into the pedal, and then it goes through a, a dropping resistor, and it comes out to like six and change voltage out here. So yeah, the pedal's more or less running around six volts really for the pedal. Uh, let's look at the Vox schematic. So this is the Supreme Mark I Vox amplifier. This is the distortion circuit. Uh, it should be immediately obvious that this is the same circuit. Um, there's no doubt that the, that Jack Telez absolutely used this as reference when making the pedal. Um, they did change some things. There's some different value resistors. The output cap is 33 nanofarad instead of 220. Uh, but the Yoko switch is the same, same 500 millihenry uh, inductor, uh, same transistors as clipping diodes thing going on, two gain stages, feedback, blah, blah, blah. It's really, it's, it's, it's really the uh, white pedal is really a, a tweaked clone of the distortion circuit in the Vox Supreme amp. So uh, let's play around with the circuit a little bit. So I have two simulations set up here. The first one here is a transient uh, simulation so that uh, we have a uh, 500 millivolt peak to peak sine wave at 1000 hertz going into the input. So let's run that. Uh, all the potentiometers are at halfway through their sweep. Um, so for logarithmic, that's not straight up and down, but it is halfway through the resistance of that potentiometer. Uh, here is, this is our input sine wave. So 250, 250 millivolts. Uh, up 250 millivolts down that's 500 millivolts peak to peak and here is our output uh, so you can see pretty wild pretty lo wild looking transient here uh, lots of little peaks and valleys and dips going on uh, this is like i said halfway on the volume control so we're almost at unity um, let's switch the yoko switch to the middle capacitor value and see what that looks like um, so a little less wild here, um, looking a little more, it's triangle wave sort of morphing into a square wave here. We can turn the gain up here, see what that looks like. So a little sharper. Um, let's put this back to where it was. Um, so that's, that's the output of pedal, clearly a distortion pedal, clearly doing some wild clipping. Um, let's go back to that previous switch setting here uh yoko switch setting that is to get that wild transient back and let's switch out uh let's switch out the transistors for diodes one diode here one diode there and another diode like that. Okay. And we'll connect those. Uh, and let's make these very standard 4148 silicon diodes. So if we're correct, we should expect to see this transient basically not change. Let's see if we're right. Yeah, so switching out those transistors for uh, just regular silicon diodes had basically no effect. Now, of course, this is LC Spice, it's just a simulation, it's not real world. Um, before I go and say definitely, it doesn't matter if you use diodes or transistors here, you should try it in a real pedal. Uh, but LC Spice is pretty good, simulation definitely suggests what is intuitively uh, likely to be the case, which is transistors versus diodes being, your transistors being used as diodes versus actual diodes, not really making a difference. Um, probably what happened here is that Vox probably just had a crap ton 
of uh, these transistors here. Also important to mention that ACY22s are germanium transistors instead of the, 20, uh, the 4125s that Jax Telez used. Um, so we'll, let's throw some germanium in there and see if that makes a difference. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, probably what happened was Vox just had a crap ton of ACY22s around and that was ended up being cheaper than just buying germanium diodes. So it's a problem I wish I had for myself right now, just having a ton of germanium transistors around. So many that I could use them as diodes, but anyway. Um, so we already know switching out silicon diodes for the transistors yielded very little change. Let's change these to uh, 1N34A germanium diodes and see what that does. Okay, so here are germanium diodes. So, <clears throat> as we would expect, um, the output went down because the forward voltage of germanium diodes is lower, and so it's going to clip sooner. However, the transient really didn't change. It, it, it really just the output voltage that's changed. That's all we really saw. Um, let's just bring up the output volume to max. Um, and he, here we can see we're getting unity volume, more or less unity, out of the pedal with the germanium diodes. So let's put back in the 4125s and we'll do, we'll, we'll look at the frequency response of the pedal. All right, so we're back to the original circuit. Uh, we're gonna do a, uh, a sort of uh, a spectrum analysis, you might call it, or a, a, uh, a analysis of the frequency response of the pedal. So let's run that. Um, so here's our input, as we'd expect, equal amplitude for the sine wave going to the input. Here is the output. Let's get rid of the phase. So this is the output uh, from the Jax Telez. And if you listen to the pedal, what we're seeing here lines up with our expectations. Um, we're seeing not a whole lot of bass content in the pedal, but a boost here in the, the mid-range and highs, as we would expect. And we have this pretty significant notch here. Uh, which we would expect to be due to the inductor. Let's play around with that Yoko switch and see what happens. So here is the middle capacitor value. And we can see the notch got more prominent and moved backwards in frequency. And then likely if we go to the even bigger capacitor value here, we should expect to see that notch move even further back. And it does, it moved back in frequency like the, the actual the peak of it, or the, I guess the trough of it, moved back, but it also got less prominent. So let's go back to the middle value, and let's cut this out here. Yeah, so that's the frequency response, and then we can play around with the, um, we can play around with the treble control, so let's make this one extreme of the treble control, and we're getting more uh, more highs, more mid-range boost. Let's go the other way on the treble control. Uh, <laughs> and essentially, we're, we're bringing the, the lower end to come up to the treble, and this notch is getting really extreme here. Uh, let's set that back to the middle. And then let's come down here to the bass control. Go to one extreme here. So really weird little notchy happening on the frequency here and a dip down here a lot not much low content down here at all still all that high content um, and then switching it the other way so here we're getting more um, more low in con content relative to the mid and high content so there we go that's the schematic of the Jex Telez white pedal, uh, a sort of a, a tweaked clone of the original Vox Supreme Defiant blah 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 uh, distortion circuit. All right, so that was the teardown of the Jex Telez white pedal. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. And if there's any other pedals you want to see me take apart, let me know. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing and hitting the notification bell. That way you know when I make a new video. I am Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.